What's up guys, welcome to Supercars of London and behind me, possibly one of the most beautiful cars in the world. This is a 2015 slash 16 Aston Martin Vanquish 2 plus 2. And I'm gonna now get out of the camera and show you around what a stunning car this is. I've never actually met someone who doesn't like the look of Aston Martins. And this car being the Aston Martin Vanquish, the ultimate car from Aston Martin, as they describe it, is one of the most beautiful cars. It's specced absolutely perfectly, and we've got a hell of a lot of carbon all around this car. This car is based on the Aston Martin 177, both the design interior and exterior, and also has a very similar exhaust system. When I announced that I was going to be replacing the Lamborghini, Aston Martin Amersham kindly let me borrow the V12 Vantage. S and when I came back I was amazed I absolutely fell in love with the 6 litre V12 in such a tiny chassis but there was a few things that I said in the video as well that it needed a double clutch gearbox or an updated gearbox and it also needed the AMG engine just for that reliability and fuel efficient levels that AMG are able to provide this car is I suppose the step up. It has got an eight speed ZF gearbox and today I'm just gonna be doing a bit of a review, a bit of a drive and first impressions on this car as I have it for 24 hours. So I'm very excited to get behind the wheel and talk to you guys about some of the things that I think are important and relevant to this car, but also the Aston Martin DB11 when it comes out later this year. I cannot wait to see that car on the road. I saw it at Geneva. I'm gonna be referencing to that car because with a new gearbox and an AMG engine, that thing is going to be serious exciting but it is the DB9 replacement don't get it confused that it is replacing the Aston Martin Vanquish this is the ultimate car ceramic brakes and a few other options aren't available on the DB11 which is specifically a GT car so Aston Martin basically say why do you need ceramic brakes on a GT car so this car behind me is the pinnacle from Aston Martin so let's jump inside check out the interior of this absolute beast and go for a drive in very Aston Martin style, we have got the standard door handle and inside we have got a beautiful place to sit. We've got quilted interior. This is the two plus two, which basically means it's got two pointless seats in the back, um, but it is a very comfortable place to be. We've got the updated center console from the 177 with touchscreen and this steering wheel. I will touch upon this steering wheel. It is basically a square which actually works I've done about 10 miles in this car I was incredibly confused by the steering wheel but I actually prefer it to a circle steering wheel <laughs> So welcome to the interior of the Aston Martin Vanquish and the driving position. You do sit quite high up and you get a nice view and the visibility is actually quite good in this car. There's no flared bonnet vents, there's no flared wheel arches. It is quite normal inside this car. I was expecting because it looks so good and the curves from the outside look amazing that you would have that inside as well. You do from the interior, but I'm talking about the views that you have from the wing mirrors throughout the uh, front. But to start it up, um, Aston Martin have given me the spare key today because the glass key is quite valuable. Um, and you put your foot on the brake and literally push it into this gap here like so. And then we are greeted by the wonderful six litre V12, which sounds absolutely incredible, even from inside the car. That is stock and it sounds amazing. Now the confusing thing with Aston Martin, but I suppose if you're a Aston Martin customer, you will know this, that the handbrake is in a really awkward position. I'm gonna need the camera now because this is where the handbrake is located. And for me to let it go, you pull it up like that, there's no effort whatsoever, click the button, and then it turns into a handbrake like any other car. And that is the parking brake off. And to put it back up, you use it just like a handbrake, click it back in, and pull it up, and then just let it sit back down there. So moving away is as simple as ever in cars nowadays. When I started driving the Vauxhall Astra, it was a manual 
and you always have to find the biting point whereas the cars that I've driven recently have just been as easy to drive as any other car and the only difference is when you start putting the power down um, but also the interior and exterior design and Aston Martin Amersham have been kind enough to lend me this car for 24 hours so I wanted to utilize that time as best as possible I've never driven a Vanquish before. This is the pinnacle of Aston Martin by the 177 and the Vulcan, which is a track car. So I just wanted to take this opportunity to do a normal review that I've been doing in the last few of my videos. So I apologize if they haven't been as entertaining or as funny as some of the other videos. However, with a couple of road trips coming up and the replacement to the Lamborghini coming soon, Hopefully things are gonna get a little bit more exciting, but with this car, the first thing that you really notice is just how quintessentially British it is. It still feels old, it still feels amazing, like, like a fine wine, it gets better with age, and the Vanquish is arguably my favorite Aston Martin to see on the road. Every time I see an Aston Martin in general, as you might have seen from my Snapchat, which if you're not following is PJW Snaps, I always love taking a picture of an Aston Martin because they look so good. They never ever look bad. Even the DB7 still looks good. But the Vanquish for me is the one that really turns my head. If I'm on the motorway, I'm going, whoa, whoa, whoa. So I do love the way that the Aston Martin Vanquish looks. From an interior perspective and driving perspective, it is just as chilled, just as classy, and just as comfortable. The seats we have got, the upgraded quilted seats, and it is a two plus two. I'm sure it's not as comfortable in the back, but as things go when you're just pooting around town, this car is incredibly easy to drive, albeit with the six litre probably being quite thirsty on fuel. Now we move on to possibly the best and biggest upgrade that the Aston Martin Vanquish got in 2013, I think, which was the eight-speed ZF gearbox. So the old Vanquish, the 2012 Vanquish, had the same S gearbox that the V12 Vantage S had, which I thought was a drawback to the car and let it down when you were cruising. When you're driving it flat out and hard and a bit of a hoon, the single clutch gearbox is fine, but just cruising around town, this is effortless. And the double clutch gearbox in any car is superior, which I've said in previous videos. So for this car to have the upgraded ZF 8-speed gearbox, it makes a huge difference just from the driving experience comparing it to the V12 Vantage S. The gear changes are completely seamless. You don't even feel them. I don't even know what gear I'm in, actually. It just says D, auto. But anyway, with that being said, you don't feel them coming down the gears, you don't even feel them going up the gears as well. So that is a huge improvement. And like myself, if you spend half of your entire day on Auto Trader looking at cars, and at the moment I'm spending a lot of time on Auto Trader looking at cars, and the whole idea of replacing the Lamborghini, this is a secret. The whole idea of replacing the Lamborghini came about when I realised that I could pretty much do a straight swap for an Aston Martin Vanquish, a 2012-2013 quite high mileage Aston Martin Vanquish. I could do a straight swap with a Lamborghini and I was thinking, well that would be amazing for road trips, it would have all of the updated technology, it would be a fantastic car to drive and cruise about in, and that's what Aston Martin do so well. However, the early Vanquishes, like I mentioned, didn't have the updated gearbox, which is why the price of them started to drop quite considerably compared to this car's rival, which is the Ferrari F12. If I was Aston Martin, I wouldn't put this car against the Ferrari F12. Yes, they're both V12, front engine, rear wheel drive. This has got slightly less brake horsepower, but the way that the Ferrari F12 delivers power is completely different. So I'm not going to compare this car to the Ferrari F12, which I have driven, which again is just a pinch myself moment. The F12 is an amazing machine, as is this car in its own right. The power delivery is slightly slower and more progressive towards the top end. That's when the power really kicks in. And I have watched endless reviews on this car. This is back again when I realized that I could do a straight swap um, with the Lamborghini. So the Vanquish to cruise around in with the updated gearbox is phenomenal. That is one of the best things about this car, as well as the interior, which has got the same center console as the V12 Vantage S that I drove from Aston Martin Amersham as well. But as soon as you take this car on country roads, it doesn't feel as big as the F12, 
doesn't feel as twitchy or as scary as the F12. And this car is just a much softer version, I think. And it's just a really, really good cruiser. So I'm just gonna sit back, pretend to be an Aston Martin driver. I suppose, just go for a cruise. And when you're done cruising, which happens every single journey because there's no way that a journey ends at a motorway, or maybe it does. But anyway, most of the time, if you are cruising on long motorway journeys, there are some twisty tight roads to finish off the journey with when you make it to your end destination. And with that being said, let's put it in sport mode. Let's stiffen up the suspension, adaptive dampening sport mode, and let's go to traction, hold it down for just long enough, and then it gives me DSC track mode selected. And basically, this is now in the equivalent of Corsa mode in a Lamborghini. This car is now as set up as it probably could be for track mode. And this is where the Aston Martin Vanquish will excel and still sit above the DB11. The stats and the performance of the DB11, yes, they are incredibly impressive. and. I think people are going to question whether that car is going to be as good, if not better, than this car. And I'm sure with that AMG engine, it is going to be absolutely phenomenal. But I just can't wait to drive that car and just see just how different the two cars are set up. Because speaking to the guys at Aston Martin Amersham, they're very excited to drive the car. But they're also very excited to compare the Aston Martin Vanquish to the DB11. Oh, the sound! And with all of the sport settings in, I get a flash of red on the gear select on my heads up display here. That tells me exactly where to change gear. And you can really hear that 177 derived exhaust system crackling. Oh. All Aston Martins sound amazing and look amazing. It's the two things that I just don't think anyone can talk them down on. And I bet the sound carries. <laughs> Coming down the rev right to the 1000 RPM mark and you get lovely crackles. And when you've got this car in sport mode, this is where the not so circular steering wheel actually plays to your advantage because you've got all of these reference points on the steering wheel which you can grip. And I've never driven a car that's got a steering wheel like it, but I actually prefer it to a circular steering wheel, which is just the most bizarre thing ever. I always looked at the Aston Martin Vanquish steering wheel, I was like, what the hell is that? Like, it's exactly the same as the 177, but... And every time I do these videos, so the last few videos I did, the 650S, which, similar sort of price bracket, the McLaren 650S, a completely different car with the 570. And I just think these cars are so good, the performance is so incredible, and cars these days are getting just faster and faster. I would love to have an element on each of these videos where I take them to the racetrack as well and really put them to the test. Not just because I've got my race license <laughs> and not just because I've spent two days go-karting at Daytona Motorsport in Isha. I just would love to really know the limit, the limit on these cars. And I think in 2016, I would love to get more track time with some road cars just to see what these cars, what potential these cars have because. How smooth was that? Fourth to first in a matter of meters. And there was not one judder, not one like this. This gearbox is very, very, very good. <laughs> this is like 
40% throttle. This is my favorite point on the Aston Martin. This car, it doesn't really want to make you put your foot down and floor it. It's not the car for that. This is all about squeezing the throttle and letting the car's engine reward you with the way that you give the car power. And then once you've built up the speed, oh, you get the exhaust note and this car comes to life. Sport mode in this car is amazing. I'm gonna take the suspension off and we've got the softer suspension now. So there's just so many things that you can do to cars now and this is why the whole Lamborghini replacement idea came about so soon I wasn't expecting to sell it so soon it's just the things that you can do and the things that are available in cars now are just on another level they are just on another level the Lamborghini is so archaic in the way that it not only delivers power the way that it changes gear and that car is an out and out drama queen the Lamborghini is an insane car but for a car, for long distance road trips, for a car to spend a lot of time sitting in the driver's seat, unfortunately, it just didn't have that quality, which is why I'm in this process of testing cars and huge thank you to every single company who's allowed me to borrow one of their demonstrators. The Aston Martin Vanquish, I feel some of you guys out there are waiting for this. I do love it. I just think, unfortunately, at the moment, it is slightly out of my price bracket, but I'm also very excited about the DB11 to come. So with that being said, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this Aston Martin Vanquish review, first impressions, thoughts. I don't really know what to call this video yet. The amount of tweets that you guys, and Instagram and YouTube, get an Aston Martin Vanquish. Um, fantastic fantastic car and I can see why so many people buy them and they are so popular being the flagship V12 from Aston Martin and whilst this video goes live I've actually done a mini UK road trip myself so I'm hoping to film a video whilst I'm down in the southwest country near Cornwall with the Nuke, which hasn't featured on my YouTube channel for quite some time. So hopefully I'm gonna talk about the road trip, how that car is as a car, because the Audi A1 is just a mini city car, but it is so good at so many things. And I was talking with Archie Hamilton, who helped me get my racing license, just how good the Audi A1 is. And he's driven some pretty awesome cars. So hopefully I'm gonna do a video down in Cornwall, and then it is back up to London to collect my new car, which is going to be happening between the 5th and 7th of April. So I will be uploading my collection video then. I'm not gonna to say too much more on what the car is going to be. And then we head on a road trip. I'm gonna be announcing that later on on my YouTube channel as well, but we're going on an epic road trip for over two weeks during April all across Europe. So stay tuned for that. Please give it a thumbs up and I look forward to seeing you very, very soon. Click subscribe if you haven't already. And yeah, I will see you in a couple of days when I'm down near Cornwall. So, cheers guys.